The Honorable Treasurer. <coughs> Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, for the opportunity to contribute to debate uh, this morning, and thank you to uh, the uh, honourable member for some of his very convoluted and confusing uh, questions this morning. So a lot has been said uh, this morning, uh, and a lot of it uh, has been assumptions very, very wrongful ones, Mr. Speaker, and I uh, will try my best to um, correct some of those and put into uh, context what uh, our government is trying to do. Uh, Mr. Speaker, um, when I try to go through uh, some of the questions that was asked this morning and um, I would say the Honourable Member himself doesn't know how many questions were asked because as he uh, went on about asking the first three questions, he started making some more comments and he, he sort of got out of control and he got confused as to which ones of those were questions and which ones of those were lies. So let me try and correct some of those today, if I may. Uh, I, I am disappointed that uh, some of us in this House continue to talk down the economy and create doubt in the public mind uh, in relation to um, the, the direction of our economy and the growth of our economy. Uh, we continue to hear statements like, people are suffering, families are suffering, but, you know, no one provides any facts. No one provides any facts. And the data that we have used in government and have been for nearly half a century uh, don't support those. And I'll give examples this morning. Um, in relation to the question, where is growth coming from, um, Mr. Speaker, um, in yesterday's statement, um, I, I have answered all of these, in fact, through the three or four or five questions that uh, the Honourable Member has asked. If he spent some time reading my statements, uh, spent more time uh, going through some of my media releases, um, he'd realise that I've answered all of them. And I would encourage him to spend more time reading my statements, uh, going through the Treasury website, because uh, not only will you be a better informed member of Parliament, I think you'll be a better person as a result of it. So in relation to growth, Mr. Speaker, um, in yesterday's statement, um, I mentioned that the growth forecast for this year was 3.5%. It's very clear, it's very clear uh, that was from the World Bank. In fact, the IMF, which I didn't mention, uh, forecast growth at 3.7%. Where does this come from? Because he keeps saying uh, and, uh, and insinuates that uh, there is no growth. And it, that couldn't be further from the truth, Mr. Speaker. Growth is uh, calculated uh, through monitoring nominal GDP, Mr. Speaker. The PNG economy is broken up into 19 sectors. 19 sectors. It starts at agriculture, forestry and fishery. Uh, number one, oil and gas extraction, uh, wholesale and retail trade, which I hope I can remember to respond to some of the uh, comments that were made this morning in relation to a, a biscuit company a big biscuit company in Ley um, claiming that they were suffering. Uh, and it goes all the way down to the 19th sector uh, called water supply and waste management, okay? And so if you have a look at that, Mr. Speaker, the way it's monitored is they start off with the breakup of our GDP forecast. Last year was around about 107 billion, and this year, as Prime Minister has uh, mentioned so often, is forecast to be 113. These are just facts. These are just how 
uh, growth is estimated. Uh, so that's where it's coming from, uh, Mr. Speaker. So um, uh, in relation uh, uh, and going through some of the uh, other very unsubstantiated uh, questions he asked, he talked about um, our record 24.5 billion budget. Well, uh, he got that right, so we both agree on that. Uh, and he's asking how does this help families? Well, Mr. Speaker, if he, if he bothered to listen yesterday, um, he would have noticed in page six of our statement, and I would like to repeat this for, for his purpose, um, and also uh, respond to his comments to his former best uh, buddy in uh, governments gone past, the Minister for Higher Education, to give more detail. Well, yesterday I gave you 12 pages of detail, very detailed uh, numbers, and so uh, on our, uh, our, our record budget, how does this help families? Well, I did say yesterday that for the first time in PNG's history, our government, the Marape government, developed a package to help uh, address some of these cost of living pressures. Uh, if we all recall, 587 million last year, we pumped back in, and 590 million this year. That's a total of 1.17 million kina that we've given to families, Mr. Speaker. Uh, no other government, including uh, your own, Honourable Leader, has ever delivered such a household assistance package. So let's stop saying that we're not trying to help our families. The facts are clear. Uh, I also mentioned yesterday, Mr. Speaker, that uh, I was pleased that the IRC had written to all employers this year, earlier this year, uh, with new tax schedules that would apply from the 1st of January. And what other assistance did we offer? Well, uh, we're providing tax cuts, or the IRC are providing tax cuts, of up to 63 kina per fortnight for all of those earning 20,000 kina or more. And to further demonstrate, demonstrate that uh, many more families are, are benefiting, uh, it was mentioned in both dailies um, earlier this year um, by Nest Fund, who estimated that the household package will benefit over 98,000 of its members. So tens of thousands of our families are benefiting, Mr. Speaker. Tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands. So let's stop making unfounded allegations like so many families are suffering. Be a little bit more positive, be a bit more accurate, be truthful, and talk about the families that are benefiting. Um, and if that was not enough, Mr. Speaker, and you say it's only benefiting those that earn 20,000 kina or more, or it benefits those that live in our rural areas, well, from the beginning of this year, 1st of January, I also mentioned yesterday and gave uh, a detail and said that uh, we're also covering the cost of school project fees for this year. Yeah? So, for example, a family no longer has to pay the project fee of 220 kina uh, for each of their children, for each of their children attending secondary school. So this program helps ensure that our household assistance package gets out to those in the rural areas and those that need help the most. So that's an example of, of the help that we're getting from this budget. And I would ask the uh, honorable members to stop downplaying, downplaying some of the positive things that we're doing and uh, be more balanced with your response. Um, he then asked another question. He uh, mentioned this morning to members of parliament that um, last year we received, or this year we're proposing to receive uh, 1.5 billion um, uh, as part of our financing plan uh, to deal with our deficit. Well, that figure is pretty well right, so we agree on that uh, figure. And then he also mentioned the 3.25 uh, million um, 
funding that we hope to get from the IMF um, in the next three years. In the next three years. And he then asked a question. Um, he then asked a question, uh, what is the debt to GDP ratio when we uh, uh, affect these particular loans? Uh, so, Mr. Speaker, I'm uh, very happy, I'm very happy to assure the Honourable Leader, assure members of this House, and assure um, the people of our country that these financing plans that include the two loans that he mentioned um, comply with our debt control laws. So, for example, uh, to answer specifically his question, what's the debt to GDP, which would apply over the next three years, so that's 2024, 2025, and 2026. Mr. Speaker, our debt to GDP uh, forecast for next year uh, sits at 52.2%. Uh, 2025 projected 513 and 2026 dropping down to 49.2%. Uh, so clearly, Mr. Speaker, clearly the way in which we undertake our financing plan, including every single loan that we take, complies with our Fiscal Responsibility Act. Unlike, unlike during their time in government, Mr. Speaker, when we took office in 2019, you will all recall we had a raging debate on whether the budgets by the then government were accurate or whether they were fake. Uh, the argument was resolved when finally we asked and agreed to an independent umpire. And who was that? That was the IMF. And their ruling was conclusive and I suggest that might be the reason why a bit of bad blood started uh, coming about with uh, some of the attitudes that we had with the IMF. So, for example, to demonstrate, Mr. Speaker, how a government should not manage its budget and to demonstrate how a government uh, breaches its own law, let me just give you very quickly some, some facts. In the 2019 budget, uh, the previous government's MAIFO, Media Economic Outlook, uh, forecast num outlook numbers uh, on, on revenue, they had forecast and announced uh, so gloriously on this floor, if I can remember sitting on the other side, that the revenue figures would be and were on target to be 14 billion kina, 14,000 million kina. We totally disagreed, if you all recall, and we suggested and claimed and stated it was 12.9 billion kina. So we then asked the IMF to intervene. They were uh, in Papua New Guinea on a country visit, and they assessed that revenue was actually 13 billion kina. In fact, 13,022 million kina. What does that mean? It means that the forecast by the government with, in relation to revenue was down 987 million kina. Their figures were out by about a billion kina, Mr. Speaker. On expenditure, their MAIFO figures said that expenditure was on target to reach 16.3 billion kina. I stated clearly in my response that year that the um, figure should have been around 17.5 billion kina. The IMF stepped in as the agreed international umpire and said it was 17.6 billion. What does this mean? The government then's expenditure figure was actually overspent, was out by a record 1.2 billion kina. 1.2 billion kina. Mr. Speaker, we have an extraordinary situation where the government's revenue was down by nearly a, a billion kina, the expenditure by, was up by over one billion kina. Was that a mistake or was that deliberate? How could you possibly make a mistake of one billion kina when you're putting together the national budget? 
And it gets worse, Mr. Speaker. It gets worse. The deficit, they said, would be 2.3 billion kina. We said, I said as Shadow Treasurer, it'd be closer to 4.5 billion kina. Guess what? The IMF came in and they said the deficit was actually 4.6 billion kina. The government then was out by 2.2 billion kina in their deficit, Mr. Speaker. And why do I share these specific numbers with you? Because I'll now get to the point. Because my friend uh, seems to like and ask me questions on debt to GDP. So let's just compare our record, Marape Rosso, with uh, his government. His MAIFO then on debt to GDP, they estimated was sitting at 31.8. 31.8. If you recall, our ceiling then was 40%. So on paper, on paper, as this parliament was being told, they were within our debt control law ceiling. We said from the opposition that it was actually in breach. It was in breach, a serious breach at 41.2%. Guess what? The IMF umpire confirmed it was 41.3%. So Mr. Speaker, the government then was in clear breach of our debt control laws. But what did we do? The Marape Rosso had to clean up the mess. We came in, we restructured the budget, and we were faced for the first time to undertake a budget cut, a budget cut which we elected to be 1.132 million kina, 1.1 billion kina budget cut which we were forced to make so that we could comply with the debt control laws. And then we were chastised, we were criticised for making these budget cuts, Mr. Speaker, as a result, we had to make some loans. We were criticised for taking loans to pay off their loans. It's a difficult world, isn't it? It's a difficult world. So, Mr. Speaker, that's to, just to get, demonstrate uh, uh, to you uh, the difference between Marape Rosso and the other guys on how we manage not just the economy, but specific items like debt to GDP. Uh, I also noticed that there was a question asked whether uh, an embarking on a three-year funded IMF program is a bailout. Mr. Speaker, I want to categorically deny that the Marape Rosso government uh, is undertaking um, a three-year funded IMF program because it's a bailout. Mr. Speaker, um, the former member, the, the the, the um, former Prime Minister and the Honourable Member gave some examples of countries uh, of, of how not to uh, uh, copy uh, when we manage our economy, and, and I agree with him. Uh, but can I uh, repeat again, and I'm starting to repeat myself probably a little bit more than I should like. Mr Speaker, as he has suggested, uh, the main reasons why countries embark on an IMF program is because uh, they're uh, experiencing economic stress, economic duress. Specifically, they normally have a balance of payment problem. Mr. Speaker, both circumstances do not apply to Papua New Guinea. Mr. Speaker, I say that because if you look at our balance of payments, as I shared uh, with the Australian government during our ministerial forum. Our balance of payment at the end of 2021, the last available figures to us, sat at around 4 billion kina. Our current account uh, balance of payment was around a record 19 billion kina, Mr. Speaker. So I'm quoting his favourite uh, institution, the Central Bank, that he always likes quoting. I'm using the same figures, so we both agree there. Uh, Mr. Speaker, um, certainly not. We do not engage with the IMF because uh, this is a bailout. We engaged with the IMF for two specific reasons. One, we want to use a credible international partner to endorse our reform package. That's number one. Number two, Mr. Speaker, as we continue with our expansionary policies for driving up our uh, PNG economy, uh, we need 
to borrow funds. And here's the point of difference, Mr. Speaker, between Marape Rosso and the previous. We focus all of our uh, financing on cheap, good concessional loans, Mr. Speaker. Um, we have not, and I hope we don't go down the track of uh, engaging with uh, expensive commercial loans. And Mr. Speaker, to be able to access concessional loans, two things happen. Not only do you pay lower interest, like we have done this year, and I mentioned yesterday in my speech, yeah, I mentioned yesterday in my speech where we've reduced the cost of interest, and this year we're making a saving of 1.3 billion kina, this year alone. Why don't some of us talk about some of the positive things that this government is doing? Why do we continually talk down our economy? Mr. Speaker, 1.3 billion kina savings this year. And where does that go? Probably, probably to most of the DSIP and infrastructure development fund that Yalabu Pangia will also benefit from. So, Mr. Speaker. The Honorable uh, Minister, I remind you that your 20 minutes of debate has slept. In the importance of this debate, I'll give you two minutes to sum up your uh, debate. And I'd like to inform you as you sum up, you look this way to the chair and address. Don't turn back to your uh, colleague members on addressing when you debate. Thank you. Certainly, certainly, Mr. Acting Speaker, your wish is my command. So to finish off with the IMF, the second reason, Mr. Speaker, why we use and why we need to, to engage with the IMF is because uh, all of the financing that we will require to continue increasing our development budget, our development budget until we reach that very important target date of 2027 to achieve a budget surplus, and until we reach that very, very important date of 2034, where we will give the government of the day the option for zero sovereign debt, is that all financing is contingent upon the IMF endorsing all of our programs uh, going forward. So when we talk about getting assistance from the Australian government, yeah, when we talk about getting assistance from the Japanese government, uh, when we talk about getting programs and assistance from the World Bank, the Asian Development Bank, uh, and all of our other multilateral partners, uh, there is a condition which they place, the IMF must endorse our five-year fiscal framework. Yeah? And if we don't go down this path, Mr. Speaker, to conclude, then we're forced to go down the alternative, alternative that he took. And that's going for commercial loans. Not only will you pay more, but you will be able to fund less and you will not be able to grow the budget that Marape Rosso has done in the three years that we've been in government. And if you study carefully the 13-year plan, I'll invite you for a free lunch in the Treasury. I can explain to you more further in detail that you so long for uh, the benefits of our 13-year plan. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.